well said health has its signs as well as disease welcome to the channel knowledge star way to continuous lifelong learning my name is anshika gaur i am the corporate communication executive today we have a very special guest dr d raja sudhakar who is a research scholar academic researcher lecturer reviewer and also a editor welcome dr d raja sudhakar yeah welcome thank you let's start with the very first question tell yes, us something about yourself and why you have chosen this field yeah uh, teaching is my passion actually um, before getting to the second part i'll just uh, answer to the first part um uh, myself d raja sudhakar i did my uh, bsc in microbiology in uh, shrimatana national science college and my msc bioinformatics in pondicherry university and uh, phd in jain jawala nagar university after completing that then i came back to my hometown to chirapalli i am working as assistant professor in bishop hiba college in the department of biotechnology and bioinformatics uh, apart from these studies i have done my dmlt diploma in medical lab technology and uh, i have completed so many online courses during this uh, pandemic time and uh, we i have published uh, near about seven papers in the reputed journals and uh, i have a project which is completed uh, one year before and right now i'm writing some two to three four projects right now also uh, to add up to my career um, this year we have attended the smart india hackathon final round in uh, jaipur actually with my students with a, a new innovative work um a uh, teaching is my passion to, uh, from my childhood actually uh, my friends used to say like uh, you are sharing your uh, the things which you know in a very clear manner and to the which is clearly understandable by to the friends actually so that's why i have chosen the field teaching the teaching field and um, i like to share my knowledge actually uh, through that one we used to gain more actually uh, that's what my whole thing All right, sir. All right, sir. Are you doing any research right now? Yeah, I am doing my research uh, right now okay. on uh, ADHD. Sir, yeah. Uh, kindly uh, tell us the brief description about the subject that you are supervising. Yeah, um, I am working on uh, ADHD. You know that uh, dengue fever, right? So I am working on that uh, dengue fever. Uh, so we are trying to predict some potential inhibitors from the phytochemical compounds. Phytochemical means from the plant-based compounds. so that won't have much side effects and it will um, be a best remedy for the uh, dengue fever uh, uh, affected patients actually so we are working on uh, petrosilinum crispum there is a plant based compound and we got some better results and right now i'm working on it uh, i'm just about i completed the project and i have written the paper we are about to publish that one and apart from that we have gone through another plant okay we say in tamil as perun dumbai so those plan compound also having some potential inhibitors so we are planning to continue the research more towards that one and we are trying to tap on tap better funding through that project actually and apart from this one i am i have done my uh, phd work on non small cell lung cancer which is a uh, you know non small cell lung cancer like, uh, in india most of the patients most of the most of them are affected with uh, non small cell lung cancer in india due to the uh, pollutions and the food which you are taking it is not only about the pollution it's all it's also about the food actually actually in our study we we come to a conclusion that in that one and apart from that uh, uh, the uh, women are affected by the breast cancer these are the two major cancers right now in india so i worked on the non small cell lung cancer we have predicted some better compounds um, from uh, life chemical databases and the kmbl databases which are more effective than the available drugs actually. and those papers also in pipeline so these are my projects work okay okay all right sir yeah. sir what is the future of in silico techniques uh yeah uh, when we are starting in the year of like 2007 we are very quite new for the field because in my my i did my msc bioinformatics in the year from 2007 to 2009 uh, which is totally new for us actually um some people i might ask me the question why you are shifting from bio- microbiology to bio like bioinformatics because microbiology is wet lab work and uh, bioinformatics is a computer based work so i said like i have my knowledge i want to apply the knowledge in some other field so that's why i was changing my path i said so and i tried my level best to apply in that field so similarly 
in, in the upcoming future most of them will be in, in silico part actually because um like in silico work is more more towards the smart work than the hard work actually so most of the works will come and come to the in silico part because the only drawback is we um we can't determine we can't say this will be the best one we can predict this may be the better one when compared to the uh, in vitro part actually so in silico will be the more future towards the uh, research because that that will reduce the time energy and the money so in silico will be the best part in the future uh, best examples are the artificial intelligence machine learning so these are the major parts actually which are focusing on my in, these are coming from the in silico part okay uh, sir what are the benefits and limitations of in silico modeling okay uh, like if you are going for the in silico modeling um, uh, like uh, if you say as a protein structure for example i am saying so you have some you, you have some sequences and you want to uh, predict you have to determine the structure means so it takes a very long time because from the sequence you have to convert the sequence to protein uh, protein for amino acid chains from that then you have to go for the topology arrangement then you have to go for the structure um, structure determination but in in silico it's very simple there are so many tools are available just take the sequence and you give it in the server there are online servers are there like itaser robot uh, uh, pyre2 sys model these are the servers are available to predict the second structure uh, means uh, protein structure apart from there is a best tool which is offline called the modeler we can model the uh, structure so these are the most advantages because uh, the first part like um, determining the uh, protein structure it takes a longer time and you have to spend a lot and you have to be more patient because you you can't say like 100% like you get the structure there will be more failure but in in silico part you can easily get the structure sure you will get the structure because if you, if you know how to do the homology modeling then you will get the structure in silico modeling if you know then you can easily predict the structure so once you predict the structure you can evaluate the structure the only limitation is that's what i said prediction in 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 vitro part you can determine you can say can't from 100% can't from you assure you can say that this is the one but in in silico part you can't give the assurance you can say you have okay, there is a limitation called prediction so this may be the better one so you have some more validations to uh, make your prediction to determine all right sir all right sir uh, what a researcher should keep in mind while choosing a research topic okay uh, basically the research starts from the home what i my suggestion is the research starts from the home so there is a saying you know that one invention is the mother uh, mother of necessity actually the necessity comes from the home because what are the difficulties which we are facing in the home it becomes a invention so those inventions becomes the project actually those research becomes a research, those uh, um, inventions becomes the projects and we can tap funding more more towards it because you will have more passion towards that one because it's not like you are not doing forcefully you are doing willingly so both are different actually so once you do it willingly so you will have more chances more, you will have more um, and give your 100% fullness to that towards the project and you will easy to get the fund actually so the topics which you focus actually like um, apart from these things in if you want to do more towards research means you have to choose the hot topics actually that means the trending topics you can say uh, for example in bioinformatics we can say artificial intelligence machine learning um, genome sequencing or or uh, um, rna sequence analysis so these are the trending topics in bioinformatics so you can choose those kind of topics and you can work on it so these things are like uh, the most of the research uh, funding agencies won't reject these kind of work actually if your project is very good and if you have some basic results then no one will stop you no one will stop you in giving funding so they will give you the fund actually okay what subjects are popular in the field of bioinformatics and biotechnology uh, for bioinformatics we can say like uh, the first thing i say is artificial intelligence because nowadays the artificial intelligence they are applying in everywhere actually even in the drug delivery system they are applying even drug designing they are applying actually so this is the trend right now in uh, bioinformatics then we can say machine learning robotics is, uh, is coming now because for the drug delivery they are using the nanoparticles so that they are applying robotics and uh, rna sequencing then genome comparison then evolutionary studies so these are the trends right now is going on in bioinformatics and uh, apart from that there is an app development task also is going on 
smart work like in smartphone we are using some apps so those things also are going on so in biotechnology we like most mostly same like big data analytics so these things also are like uh, wet lab and dry labs are combining together so big data analytics and um, green technology sustainable development so these things are going very trending in biotechnology what factors are responsible for delaying the research projects and how a researcher can overcome to these obstacles okay um, the first thing is the funding actually the first thing is the funding because uh, without funding you can't do work because you may have some idea better idea you can apply so until unless you you are not getting the fund you have to wait uh, even for example if you apply for a patent you have some any innovative work and you applying for a patent you have to wait for at least 18 months so you should have the patience so you should you should overcome you should know how to overcome your patience i think like we should have more patience actually because some people won't have much patience so if you lack the patience then it's very difficult to survive in the research uh, research industry actually so you should have more patience then apart from funding then you should know like uh, some uh, special equipments such as like uh, some glassware or which are very costly or uh, some instruments are very costly so those things may get delayed because instead of uh, even you have funding you are applying for, you are giving the money to pay so you are paying the money uh, but there will be some delay in getting the uh, chemicals and getting the instruments and getting the glassware so that will delay your work because sometimes the sample will be like very delicate it will go off within 2 or 3 days but uh, your uh, glassware are coming very late or chemicals are coming very late then you have to overcome it so that means you have to plan accordingly so so these are the main obstacles so until unless you plan accordingly you won't work so before getting into research you should know what you're going to do so that what we used to say like uh, <clears throat> planning uh, according to the timeline you should know but like in one month you will do this one in two months you will do this one in three months you will do this one so you have to do the planning so once you know the planning and if you execute very well then you can easily overcome all this kind of obstacles okay what is the importance of funding agency in research projects okay um the main importance like what they focus actually like uh, uh if they want to give fund actually uh they they will check out for the basic research results actually whether you are you are giving any research papers which is published on your name okay so he should have some basic research like for as i said uh, for my work like i have worked on some uh, one plant called the petroleum uh, crispum petroleum crispum so i have the results so if i publish the paper then i apply for a major project then i can easily tap the fund because since i already have some results and a promising results means positive results so then i can easily tap the fund so these things mainly they focus then next thing what they focus actually like is it better for the society how it is useful for the society this is the main thing they focus actually these are two factors they focus which are whether you have the preliminary results and your work is very helpful for the society or not and how much funding you are needing you are you need actually if you like both if you are satisfying the primary results and the society and if you are asking for more funding like two crores or three crores they won't fund at all they will reject the project so you have to reduce the um, funding level actually there there is a limitation so if you say 50 lakhs means then you have to quote for you have to quote up to like 38 lakhs or 45 lakhs not more than that maximum you can quote up to 40 lakhs 40 to 45 lakhs not more than that so you should reduce it um, because some people may think like if you quote like 60 lakhs or 70 lakhs then they give you 50 lakhs but they they never do like that you have to quote up to like 40 lakhs or 42 lakhs or 45 lakhs maximum is 45 lakhs you can quote not more than that and you get you have to reduce the manpower and that that's what i said so if you want to do the if you want to reduce the manpower and your energy like for money then you have to stick on to the in silico so you and your project should have a both in vitro and in silico not only in silico they won't accept and not only in vitro they won't accept you should have the both mixed one you should have the in silico and the in vitro then only any funding agency will ready to accept you one because it can it validates both side because if you predict whatever you predict in the in silico you can validate in the in, in vitro so whatever you are predicting in in vitro you can show it clearly in the in silico so it you can validate your work so these things they focus on all right so now what message do you want to give to our viewers okay um my message like um 
the first thing you should have more patience if you want to be a researcher you should have more patience and kindly get a very small problem and try to work on it don't never think of like uh, very big problems and start doing it kindly start from a scratch kindly start from a scratch and do it and then try to make it collaborative work never do it alone the research are uh, like even if you want to clap you should have you have, you have to join two hands without by using single hand you can't produce a sound right same if you want to give a better <coughs> better output and better results you should have a collaborative work and the collaborative work should be like very with a very effective person okay and the idea should be novel which is in the trending field the first once you get the idea to do something you have to check it out whether the work is already done or not that is very very important if it is done kindly leave it then choose some other point okay if it is not it done then check it out who will who else are doing or who is ready to do with you like like that's what i said is collaborative work so who is willing to do uh, whether it is applicable to your work so if you check it out this one then you can easily make a collaborative work so you should have the patience you should be more you should be ready to collaborative and the work should be very novel so if you have these things then you should focus on the correct funding agency like you are working on like uh, um, medical research field and you are applying for dst sometimes they will reject sometimes they will reject so you have to focus on icmr okay so those uh, field people they 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 never reject actually so you should focus on the correct funding agency and you have to apply in the correct time with the proper required documents if you are once you apply with this one then no one will reject you and the major focus you should have the basic findings and your expected outcome should be very clear so if you have these things then it's very easy to tap funding so this is the best advice i want to give to them and they should work in india that's that's a, that's the main thing i have to say like uh, apart from my research thing i have to say you want to say me to give general so whoever do their work research work they are going out like what whoever they are studying in india they are using all the resources and they are studying it and they are going to foreign and they are getting settled in foreign but my personal advice is they should come back to india they should develop over india because once we start to work like uh, we start to work towards the growth of india then we have we will produce a better nation actually so that will be like within 10 years we can develop a better nation uh once we start to work in india in, in in india for india if you work for india and within india then we can do that one and uh, apart from these things like they should start companies actually entrepreneurship companies because where where we are lacking where we are lacking is the companies best companies because we want to work under some people we never want to work for we want to we never want to start a company and we never never want to give um, salary to some other people so once we have the vision clear vision we can start a company we can become an entrepreneurship and we can develop the india to by like oh, all high actually all the all the countries will come down <laughs> in india and in india okay sir okay thank you so much thanks okay. for this thank wonderful interaction thank you ma'am for more updates subscribe to our channel click the links shown on the screen to stay connected